In response to the urgent need to reduce the number of new HIV infections globally, the World Health Organization convened an international expert consultation to determine whether male circumcision should be recommended for the prevention of HIV infection. Based on the evidence presented, which was considered to be compelling, experts attending the consultation recommended that male circumcision now be recognized as an additional important intervention to reduce the risk of heterosexually acquired HIV infection in men. The international consultation, which was held in March 2007 in Switzerland, was attended by participants representing a wide range of stakeholders, including governments, civil society, researchers, human rights, and women's health advocates. The recommendations represent a significant step forward in HIV prevention. Countries with high rates of heterosexual HIV infection and low rates of male circumcision now have an additional intervention which can reduce the risk of HIV infection in heterosexual men. Scaling up male circumcision in such countries will result in immediate benefits to individuals. There is now strong evidence from three randomized controlled trials undertaken in Kenya, Uganda, and South Africa that male circumcision reduces the risk of heterosexually acquired HIV infection in men by approximately 60%. Experts at the meeting agreed that the cost-effectiveness of male circumcision is acceptable for an HIV prevention measure, and in view of the large benefit of expanding male circumcision services, countries should also consider providing the services free of charge or at the lowest possible cost to the client. Scaling up male circumcision in many countries would have an immediate effect. No other piece of the body has the same amount of susceptible target cells. A significant public health impact is likely to occur most rapidly if male circumcision services are provided where the incidence of heterosexually acquired HIV infection is high. It was recommended that countries with heterosexual HIV epidemics that currently have low rates of male circumcision consider urgently scaling up access to male circumcision services. A more rapid public health benefit will be achieved if age groups at highest risk of acquiring HIV are prioritized. Although providing male circumcision services to younger age groups will also have public health impact over the longer term. Modeling studies suggest that male circumcision in Africa could prevent 5.7 million new cases of HIV infection and 3 million deaths over 20 years.